If all went according to plan, I'm sitting in a perfect living room with a perfect kitchen behind me, and the crazy thing is, I could change any part of it. This is the room that I'm actually sitting in, and this is one of the many worlds that I can create pretty easily and pretty quickly in post. There's a couple things you need to do to get this right. One is to take notes on all of your camera settings, lens, focal length, distance from the camera to the talent. Just kind of record everything, maybe even the dimensions of the room. It's good to shoot in an environment that is similar to what your final environment will be like. Don't shoot on a black background if you want your final to be on a white background. We're gonna use a couple different softwares for this, all very accessible and all pretty easy to use. First thing we wanna do is look at the footage and resolve. It's good to have an image up here when we build the background. You can use any software you want, but I'm gonna use Satellite 3D, super easy to use. I have a video on this channel on how to do everything in it, but for now, we are just gonna utilize it for creating a background. Here is our setup. What I did was create something that is similar to where I was. In the original shot that we saw, I was sitting on the couch, which is over there, and the lighting was just the lighting coming through the window that's behind me over here. Side note, if you can tell me what movie this is, I will have major respect for you. So I just put an M40 through some diffusion to kind of mimic the light that was on me. I positioned the camera to the same distance as I had the camera in real life. I matched all these settings to what I had in camera. I added a tennis ball and then I will remove the model so that my focus is on just a small point in the frame. Now I will save a frame of this, render the shot, and also while working on the scene, I would flip back and forth between DaVinci Resolve and check my original frame and the new frame just to make sure things kind of lined up. Specifically that the model that was in there had a similar position to where I was just to make sure that I was building a background in the right area and that things looked right for somebody, in this case, sitting on a couch. We will now go back into DaVinci Resolve to prep the footage to be able to put that shot in the background. I will develop a grade that is close to what I think I want. I will save that grade and then go back to Rec. 709 just for the purposes of removing the entire background and isolating me from the shot. I have found that this works well just operating in Rec. 709. So we're gonna add another node after the 709 LUT and we are gonna go over to the magic mask and just draw a line on what you want to isolate. If you select a bunch of the image, it kind of helps. You can see what you've selected by hitting the mask overlay here. And another way it's a little bit easier is if you just hit shift H, it's in highlight mode and you can see what's there. And in a lot of this scene, I had a gap in here. So I'm gonna hit option to change it to subtraction. And there's just a little bit here. So let's see if we can even get that. Yeah, we got that. And you can see what happens when we change this to better down here in the default faster, it's kind of cutting into my sweatshirt a little bit, but when I go to better, it's looking pretty good. And a hot tip in Resolve, if you zoom into your image and you just like need to get it back, you can just hit Z. In the beginning of this video, what you saw was the selection similar to what we see here and no other settings changed down here. Also, I've noticed that stopping down the lens helps a little bit here because if, for example, your ears are out of focus, it might be a little bit harder for it to figure out the edge. We're gonna hit this button right here and it's going to analyze the footage. So now we have our footage analyzed. I'm still in highlight mode. Where the edges are, if there's white behind here in real life and you're adding white later and the magic mask didn't get it 100% perfectly, this won't matter as much. When you shoot on a white background, but you wanna put a black background in, it is a little bit more noticeable. But if you tune these tools here, you can get uh, better results. I am going to then drag the alpha output into our output here and create a matte. Render this clip only at our timeline resolution. It is important to render the matte to the timeline resolution, and it's important to set up your whole project at the timeline resolution, which should be your whole entire clip. So this was a two times anamorphic, shot on an Arri LF sensor, which is 4448 by 3096. Uh, instead of stretching it wide and having massive footage, I squished it down and halved 3096 to 1548. So I'm gonna work in that resolution for my footage, my timelines, my mats, and my background. So I'm gonna render this. Our mat has been rendered. I am going to go in here and 
put our output back into the output and I'm just going to completely remove our grade so that we can work in log C. So I'm gonna go into the edit and right click on our clip and say new fusion clip. I will then enter fusion and I will bring our mat that we just created into resolve, connect this into our media in and hit media in, go to settings and change the channel to red so we can see the background has been removed. Now we're ready to put the environment we created into the background. So this is our shot from Set a Light 3D. And in Set a Light 3D, you can't, as far as I know, specify very specific dimensions, but I selected a three by two sensor, which is similar to the Alexa and um, a two X anamorphic lens. So that output a 3840 by 1280 image, but what we need is our timeline resolution of 4448 by 1548. You don't really need that. You can change the size of things in Fusion, but I like when things are matching up. I am going to change our height to 1548 and select our crop, and I'm just gonna type in our actual resolution here. And in my tests, I just scooted this over a little bit. So now we have an image that matches our timeline resolution, which will make things a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna flatten this and save it. I will bring that into Resolve and transform this into Log C with a color space transform. I will then go back to Fusion, bring in our Log C, shot and just drag it into the area down here. Add a merge node here and this is the background right here but we want to switch it into the foreground and then I will drag this into the background. So now we can see our shot in here and we can move me around, we can move the background around but everything is lining up how we saw it and how we planned for it because we're working the same resolution the entire time. I will go back over to the color tab, put the grade that we made earlier on this and see what we're looking at. Definitely this is fitting seamlessly into the shot. We can change the grade if we want. Like I'll just add another node and let's say we just wanted to like darken things a little. This will affect everything as a whole, but we can adjust the elements independently. Let's say we think that this is a little bright in the background. We can go to fusion and our background is right here and we can hit shift space. And I'm just gonna go to curves, color curves, and bring our background down just a touch, pop over to the color tab and see what that looks like. This looks pretty good right here. I think I will land on that image. You can then go back into the software and make tweaks, output other renders, bring them into Resolve, shift things around, change your exposure, change your lighting, kind of hone in on what looks good. And this is kind of like a quick putting together of this stuff, but you can take this a little bit further. And that is that. I will then render this out, put it back into Premiere, put it in a two to one timeline in this scenario and call it a day. All right, I'm back in the fake living room. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you make any cool things with this. As always, and in all of the things that I'm talking about, about new technology that's coming out, this stuff improves pretty quickly and I'm excited to see where it goes. All right, that's all I got, peace.